Hola a todos, soy Javier Poveda y esto es De Bien TV, el canal donde te lo vas a pasar. Uf, de bien, mientras aprendes geografía, historia, historia del arte y este año un poquito de economía y de empresariales. Este vídeo es para mis alumnos de cuarto de la ESO de sección de el CEIPSO, el Encinar de Torrelodones. Casi me equivoco al decir el centro, madre mía. So, in this video, we are going to start with the unit 4, the Industrial Revolution and the Class-Based Society. As usual, we are going to follow the presentation you have already uploaded to the virtual classroom. So, let's go. Boom. Here we are, the Industrial Revolution and the Class-Based Society, with this beautiful picture or painting by William Turner, who was a magnificent painter. So the first part is the Industrial Revolution. Let's go. So what is the Industrial Revolution? It's the process through which the technological advances led to dramatic economic changes. And during this period, the industry replaced the agriculture as the main economic activity until today. Even though today um, the most important economic activity is the tertiary sector, In this period, the industry uh, developed a lot. This process started in Great Britain about or around the year 1750. So what were the causes of this industrial revolution? Well, first, we need to know that it was a long and slow process which took almost a hundred years. So between 1750 and 1850. 50 more or less. It was caused by uh, numerous factors, they were related with each other and they emerged simultaneously in Great Britain. They were the following. First, <clears throat> the population growth. So during this century, during this, this 18th century, the living conditions improved so much across Europe and especially in Great Britain. So this led to a growth of population. You can see that in this graph. This is the, the evolution of the population in England for the last thousand years. Here you have a very slow but steady growth in, uh, except for this period, the Black Plague. And suddenly when the revolution begins, the industrial revolution begins, the population goes boom, boom. And it um, almost quintuplicates in just a hundred or two hundred years. Then the agricultural revolution. Um, why this population growth happened? Because of the agricultural revolution. The, the agricultural production increased exponentially. It increased a lot and the crops became more varied, so the, this allowed the population to grow. The small family owned farms were replaced by extensive agricultural holdings that were more profitable and were more productive. And also the Norfolk system was introduced. It rotated complementary crops which helped to prevent soil exhaustion every four years. This was an improvement um, um, referring to or uh, from the uh, three year crop rotation that was the main um, system during the early modern age. Whoops, no, whoops, here. Also, uh, the trade increased even more because in Great Britain, the foreign trade, um, well, this happened in Great Britain because the country dominated the trade routes in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. This is the, um, the starting point of the hegemony of the British Empire. Also, the domestic trade grew due to an increase in demand and improvements to road and waterways. We will see the transport revolution later, and this increase in demand was caused by the improvement in living conditions. So when, you, uh, when your living conditions are better, you demand more and more products. And lastly, the technological advances. Maybe this is the one of the most important because the Industrial Revolution was the start of the machine age, which is the use of machines to carry out work tasks, which is also called mechanization, and it substituted the manual work. So they needed less 
workforce to, produ to produce the same products and the machines are also more efficient. Why? More efficient. Why? Because the machines don't get tired. And what is the key for this? The modern steam engine that was invented by James Watt in the year 1769. This is a very important date. This is um, the steam engine and the steam power became the source of energy that drove the new machines. Okay. This is the Norfolk rotation, the Norfolk system, the four year crop rotation. Before that, the uh, people are, are, are in agriculture. The three-year crop rotation was uh, used in, the, um, in one um, part of the terrain. You, <clears throat> you produce the barley, peas, or beans. In the other one, you produce a cereal, which is wheat. And the third one remains in fallow, barbecho, which is um, uh, a part of the terrain that is not cultivated. But with the Norfolk system, in which uh, you, you grow turnip or other roots, wheat and barley and fodder, and you can uh, cultivate the full terrain of your, of your own. Okay, so you don't, have, you don't need the fallow. That is, this is one of the, um, of the best improvements because all the terrain was producing you didn't need to leave the, the soil rest to rest okay this is bats steam engine okay this turn the heat power of the steam into kinetic force okay whoops into a kinetic force here boom 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 and this could power the machines and here you have a lot of videos of no no or well not yet that that is a video if you want to see it and of uh, how the steam engine works so what were these consequences so we have one consequence for each cause so the population growth encouraged agricultural and industrial development why because there was an increased demand for food and manufactured products and also this is very important because there were more workers available to work in the factories. So there was a lot of workforce which could work in the factories mainly because, well, of also because of the population growth, but mainly because they migrated from the rural areas to the cities where the factories were located. The agricultural improvements enable the population growth and industrial developments. Why? Because since there are more food, um, more people can be fed. Okay, and it, this was possible. Uh, it was possible to produce enough food for this growing population. The population doesn't grow if there is in, there is not enough food to feed them. The increased trade encouraged industrial development because the profits from trade were invested in industry. So how do you create new factories with the money, the bourgeois, um, the, these new um, industrial capitalists um, got from the trade? And finally, mechanization meant that products could be produced more quickly in greater quantities and were cheaper to produce. Okay, Instead of the... Um, uh, manual or hand, handcrafted products, now we have industrial products which are produced faster, cheaper and in more number. Okay. So what were the key elements of industrialization? Well, we are going to focus in the three more improved sectors, the textile industry, the iron and steel industry and the transport. So first, the textile industry, we have to talk about, uh, well, this was um, one of the most mechanized industries in Great Britain. Because, uh, well, the mechanization of the textile industry through the invention of the spinning machine and the mechanical weaving loom, la hiladora y el telar mecánico, caused an increase in production. So, and the large size and expense of the new mechanical looms, brought about the birth of the factory 
A factory is a place, a large building in which you, you keep your new machines. Okay, because uh, this building, the factory, are needed to house the machines and the workers. Okay, because they cannot uh, work in the middle of the street. In the iron and steel industry, this uh, the development of this industry was facilitated by the use of coal, el carbón, as a source of energy. When you heat um, the the coal. You produce well. You produce heat, and then you can produce steam. With that, you can heat the water, and you get steam. And there were new techniques such as the Bessemer converter. Here you have one of them that allowed foundries to transform iron into steel, hierro en acero, in large quantities, as well as producing a better quality product. And this will um, influence a lot in the development of the transport industry. So, here you have the first ever made iron bridge in the world, which is uh, located in England. And here you have a lot of videos about how uh, the new uh, machi textile machines work. Okay, this is the flight. No, this is the flight. No, this is the flying shuttle. This is the flying shuttle again by no by John K. This is the spinning Jenny from James Hart, well, by James Hargreaves. No, Dios mío. This is the water frame by Richard Arkwright. Arkwright, Dios mío. A ver. And this is the spinning mule by Samuel Compton. And finally, the power loom, el telar mecánico eléctrico. Bueno, eléctrico. Um, um, el telar mecánico uh, by Edmund Cartwright <sighs> Ahora. finally the third one the third uh, sector is the transport uh, the, the transport one so and this is called also the transport revolution that brought improvements to the waterways and roads and it allowed raw materials and goods to be transported easily and quickly. That is also one of the causes of the increased trade. However, these improvements would not have been so significant without the invention of the steam engine and its use in land and sea transport. So one of the main uh, uses of this new steam engine was um, in vehicles, okay? in, um, in boats and in locomotives. So the first steam locomotive was invented by Richard Trevithick. Tre, tre, vamos a ver. Tre, Trevithick. Trevithick. Ahí viene. In 1804. Also, the steamship, el barco de vapor, by Robert Fulton in 1807. And the first public railway. So the, so the first um, train that worked, that actually worked. Um, was uh, invented by uh, George Stephenson, the rocket, that was the name of the locomotive, in 1829. So it made it possible to move large quantities of products more quickly. The first railways were, um, well, or joined the factories with the ports. So, and also the, well, the factories and the ports, and also the, um, the places where you extracted the raw materials, for example, the iron mines, so you could uh, transport these raw materials to the factories and then the products from the factories to the ports, and then they were traded. This is the first boat, the first steamboat, uh, the Claremont by Robert Fulton. Here you can see this was moved by the force of a steam engine. Here you have the chimney. And this is the rocket by Stephenson. This one of these, which is very, it's very beautiful. And this is a video in which you can see a replica working. No, no. Oh. So um, we have talked about the industrialization in Great Britain. How about the rest of the world? So this uh, during the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution spread to other European countries. For example, the first ones were Germany, Belgium, and France. Later, also to the United States, because uh, Great Britain uh, had a lot of trade links with this, oof, with this, um, with this country. 
And in Spain, uh, the industrialization began uh, a bit later in the 19th century, and it was a slow process because of many problems as usual. For example, the domestic demand was limited because 70% of the working population were peasants, okay? And the poor quality of coal from the Spanish mines in Asturias or in, well, in the north, the insufficient domestic capital available, and also for, because of the insufficient domestic capital available for investment in industry. As you know, the, well, our country, Spain, was was not in its best moment in history. And in the mid-19th century, the two industries became important in Spain. The cotton industry, the textile industry, mainly established in Catalonia, and the iron and steel industry, which began in Marbella, in Málaga, which is uh, curious, and later it was developed in Asturias and Vizcaya, Los Altos Hornos. Here you have a map of the spread of the Industrial Revolution in, in Europe. It uh, started in Great Britain, then France and the German Empire and Belgium and the Netherlands, and later the rest of Europe was, uh, was affected by this Industrial Revolution, in which we include Spain. We are the last for everything, I know. And that's it. This is a factory in Barcelona, if I am not mistaken. So, here we are again. Esto ha sido todo por esta primera parte del tema 4 de la revolución industrial. Espero que os haya servido de ayuda. Muchas gracias por verlo y que paséis feliz Navidad porque estoy grabando esto a día 28 de diciembre, día de los inocentes. Y ya sabéis, seguidme en redes sociales, Instagram, CDF, Daisy y mi nuevo descubrimiento, mis streamings en directo en los que juego a videojuegos mientras aprendemos historia en twitch.tv barra de bienstream. Muchas gracias y nos vemos en el próximo.